Okay, good morning once again. Uh, hello everyone, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, depending on where you are. Welcome everyone on site and everyone watching us virtually. My name is Maciej and I'll be your host today. Um, unfortunately, Janet and Ken, who are our co-chairs for SIG CLI, uh, SIG apps, sorry. <laughs> I'm in the mood from like literally from 24 hours ago when I was presenting for SIG CLI. Uh, Janet and Ken uh, could not be here, but they are also uh, leading the SIG apps with me, ensuring that the organizational side of things is slowly moving forward, as well as uh, uh, leading the technical uh, direction for SIG apps. Uh, where you can find us? Well, Kubernetes has a Slack, SIG apps, that's where we hang out. There's a mailing list. If you have any questions, re uh, problems, issues, feel free to reach out to, uh, to us. There are always bi-weekly meetings uh, happening at 6 p.m. European time. The other time zones are also mentioned on this slide. Uh, you can f feel free to add any topics to the agenda if you feel like you have something important to talk to us, whether that will be for pull reviews, you have some specific issues that you want to discuss, don't be afraid to reach to us and ask any kind of questions. Or if you want to be a contributor, that's even more welcome, feel free to, to ask anything. Uh, what, are your, what is that the SIG apps does? So primarily, we are responsible for ensuring that you can deploy and operate your application on any Kubernetes conformant cluster. I link the charter and our annual report, which goes into details what actually we did. But on, on the following uh, couple of slides, I'll try to highlight the major initiatives that we've been ongoing uh, for the past two releases since the last update that we had during KubeCon in Los Angeles, as well as what we are going to do over the next uh, couple of releases. So most importantly, the GA features, these are that you can actually safely use in production and we fully support you to do it. DTL after finish, so uh, it's a nice little controller which allows your jobs because a job is meant to run to a completion and then it's done, uh, which basically means the resources hold by a job, even that if that will be just uh, the, um, the storage in etcd, they will be held in your etcd forever. Uh, that particular small controller, which has been in uh, beta for quite a while, has been promoted to GA. Uh, thanks, Sihil, if I remember correctly. Um, you just, there is a tiny little spec field at a job where you specify how long it has to live after the job has completed, after which the job will be uh, removed. So you can think about it like a uh, garbage collector for jobs. Uh, the new other two additions are coming from our friends from the workgroup batch, which I'll talk about in a minute, what they do. Uh, the first one introduces index jobs. What are index jobs? So normally when you run a job, it will ensure that it will run this many pods for your particular task. I don't know, five, 10, whatever you specify. Index job is like stateful, so stateful set in a, job, in a job world in that every single pod will have their own index. So if it fails, a particular index with a number um, attached to it will be respawned for this particular. So you can do some, for example, uh, embarrassing parallel jobs or um, address particular pods within a job with uh, headless service. Um, another one, which was also coming from Workgroup Batch, as I mentioned, is a tiny little improvement to a job API where you can actually suspend a job. Uh, this will be useful for if you have an external controller managing your jobs. When you suspend a running job, uh, the controller will remove all the ru currently running pods. Um, and then upon unsuspension, you will be able to uh, recreate whatever was uh, left there to be done. It's kind of similar to what cron jobs allows because cron job also has a notion of uh, pausing. But in case of a cron job, the pause means that there are no jobs triggered until, uh, until we remove the suspension. Uh, on to the beta, beta features. Uh, again, quite a lot of the, the beta features and um, the work around the job API has been coming from the uh, workgroup batch. 
And the first one is probably something that I've been trying to address since very early days. So if you worked ever with jobs, the way jobs currently work is it will spin up this many pods, but the way it is calculating which pods completed for a job, it requires the pods to be uh, on the cluster, which is fine if your job is running, I don't know, like five, 10, up to 100, let's say, uh, pods, that's fine. But if you run a thousand pods or more, those pods lingering around in your cluster are eating uh, serious numbers of your resources, which is a pain. So what Aldo did, we started implementing a finalizer on the pods that are being created by the job controller. And as we are removing them, we're also removing the finalizer and we're accounting the numbers properly so that we can track and we don't require the pods to be uh, sitting in a quite a while. That feature actually, and Adel mentioned that yesterday during uh, his presentation, that has been going back and forth several times. There has been multiple issues with it. Uh, we struggle with it. So if you have something like that, feel free uh, to ping us with all the issues before we reach GA, which will probably happening in a release or two. Uh, feel free to reach us, let us know, drop uh, on, on our Slack channel on, 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 or on one of our meetings, and uh, we're happy to hear from you. Uh, another one uh, for stateful sets is actually ensuring that when you are adding new pods to your uh, stateful set, you can specify how long, what is the minimal required time for the pod that it has to be ready before we will be able to serve traffic. Something similar already exists for deployments and daemon sets, stateful set was, uh, was not accounted for it, so we wanna align all the controllers uh, with it as well. Uh, another uh, tiny little addition from the worker batch, which exposes the information how many ready pods in a job there are in the status. Uh, finally, uh, for the job, so as I mentioned before, we have an option to suspend a job. And by default, jobs do not allow modify that many fields, only parallelism can be modified. We figure out that for certain use cases, you would like to be able to modify the scheduling uh, primitives uh, for a pod in a, uh, in a job. For that, we allow modifying those scheduling directives in a job, but would has one that has not been unsuspended. So you can create a job suspended by default, and on, before you actually start running the job, you can still modify uh, its scheduling directives, which is handy for, uh, for the batch use cases. On to alpha features. There's a, quite a few of them. Uh, Max unavailable, which basically if you've ever worked with a stateful set and you're rolling newer version of stateful sets, you know that we are trying to roll one by one. Um, there are some use cases where we would actually be okay running more than one and the max unavailable actually allows that. So you can specify that we will be running more, uh, more uh, pods within a stateful set towards the newer version. Similarly for stateful sets, uh, Mark added an option to decide what's going on with your PVCs. By default, um, all the PVCs were deleted when, uh, when stateful set was either scaled down or removed. Currently, for both of these operations, you can specify that um, it can be either removed or we will uh, retain uh, the PVC for a little bit longer. So you can disconnect uh, the lifetime of a stateful set from, uh, from the lifetime of the storage backing uh, your application. Uh, another that, we, that we've been talking for quite a while now, we finally had some uh, initial idea how we wanna uh, implement and we managed to put together a, a Kubernetes enhancement proposal, which is a document that describes how we wanna implement a particular feature, is consolidated workload uh, controllers uh, statuses. That's a something that if you ever work with Kubernetes, especially if you're a newcomer, and if you play with, let's say, deployments, you think you know how the controllers work, and then you switch over to uh, daemon sets, for example. 
you actually have to learn how the uh, daemon set presents its statuses, its progress anew. So we're trying to, as much as possible, in line the statuses with all the controllers so that once you learn one controller, you will be able to roughly figure out what's going on with your controller across the board. And on top of that, you will be able to also write higher level controllers on top of the, uh, on top of the existing controllers. That's something that probably will take uh, significantly longer than we would wish uh, because there's a lot of controllers, there are uh, various edge cases that we're trying to somehow figure out in some, uh, in some common ground. Um, another one that we recently closed is a pod healthy policy for pod disruption budgets. So during one of the discussions a couple months back, uh, there happened to be an issue with how we are accounting pods for a pod disruption budget. Uh, up until now, we are only uh, we are equally counting running and ready pods in the same way, or pending pods. There is no way for you to say that only running pods should be accounted for a PDB. So the pod healthy policy actually uh, introduces a little more wiggle room into how PDBs are counting or which pods are being counted uh, for pod disruption budgets. And finally, uh, a feature that has been requested multiple times since almost the early days when we introduced the cron jobs or even when it was called scheduler jobs, which is a time support, time zone support. Um, that is a feature that, that we rejected a couple years back for uh, multiple reasons, including one that would require all the Kubernetes distributions to include a uh, time zone database since the addition of the time zone database into the Golang uh, in the default library, we can now safely say that any conformant Kubernetes can uh, properly support time zones. Although there are some fallouts out of just the fact that we added that uh, particular because we try to put a very strong validation around the time zone uh, names and it turned out that Mac OS um, with its uh, file name handling where you can have various cap sizes, lower and uppercase will work equally, uh, fails our unit tests. So one of the requirements for beta uh, graduation for, cron for time zone in cron job will be figuring out how to properly uh, handle the time zone uh, issue on Macs uh, primarily. Um, Okay, so what are we going to do over the next couple of releases? So primarily, as I mentioned, we will like to uh, get to completion all the current alpha and beta features. If from the beta or alpha features, there is something that you are interested in, you wanna help or you actually wanna test and you can provide features, feel free to do so drop on our Slack, drop on our mailing list and information that you are having issues, what are the problems. Um, feedback is super important for us to ensure that before we graduate something to general availability, that the feature is rock solid, rock solid stable, and then there are no uh, major issues. Um, on top of that, there is a, a general sentiment towards pushing stuff to GA or eventually uh, they will be removed entirely from Kubernetes. Uh, there is a separate um, enhancement proposal that has been merged, uh, I think last year, where to prevent perma beta uh, states of certain features. This is to ensure that we are slowly but moving forward and something that has been pushed to a certain level but hasn't progressed to a general availability should actually be removed. So we wanna make sure that the current features, we're trying not to introduce too many features at any single point in time, but rather focus on completing the ones that we already have in progress. Uh, secondly, uh, there is an enhancement proposal about increasing the overall reliability of the Kubernetes project or the products that are based on a on Kubernetes project. 
and there has been uh, sent a letter sent by the majority of the contributors from the Kubernetes project where we are increasing the overall acceptance criteria for any uh, pull requests, either adding new features or fixing certain uh, areas. So if your PR or your issue will, um, will get some pushback, it's not a personal thing. We're trying to ensure that everything is properly tested, everything is properly verified before uh, accepting that to core. That also means that if you will be fixing certain area that did not have a test before, it might be pushed back and you will be asked to add some tests uh, even though there were none before. Thankfully, in the majority of the controllers, both the units and integration and E2E testing is pretty good, but we still have certain areas uh, like something that I, I've been pinged on last week where for stateful sets, the tests, the unit tests that we actually had were just verifying that we are throwing an error and but without actually looking into what the error was. And it turned out that because of the um, misconfiguration of the test, because it was lacking one always required field, the test will always fail. And everyone were expecting, oh, it, it's a failure. So it was failing always. So it was always giving you a false positive. Um, the author reached out to me. He, I started looking at it and I asked him to, to do something similar to what we already have in the batch group where we are actually introspecting each error for the field names and possibly also the type of the error. So nowadays the stateful sets, if Jordan or when Jordan approves it, uh, will have a little bit more um, appropriate test cases. So there are those edge cases where nobody actually was, was aware about them and um, it's pretty nice that someone actually was able to, uh, to find it. So if you're into this, uh, you are more than uh, welcome to join us, help us with any con kind of contributions. If you're interested with either improving our documentation for all the controllers or any kind of specific controllers, if you wanna help with uh, project management because you're a project, ma uh, project manager, we are more than happy to, uh, to have people help us in various different places, whether that will be managing the issues, managing the open pull requests. We still have problems with having uh, proper contributions or uh, most importantly, reviewers and then approvers in the area. I'm fully aware that getting the, get, going through the contributions ladder in uh, in the SIGAPS area is quite complicated because the, the initial knowledge needed to ensure that every piece that we're changing in the controllers is not trivial and it does require a, quite some time to, uh, to look at one controller or several. Uh, for me personally, even every single time at this point in time, if I'm looking at certain PRs, I, I'm getting different messages on Slack have I ever looked at PRs and stuff like that? Every single PR that I'm looking from the controllers area, I usually will double check in a running cluster to ensure that it doesn't break something. Uh, the scope of potential problems when modifying controllers is pretty big. Uh, so we need to ensure that uh, anyone who can um, and who does approve PRs in this area is 100% sure and it's not only about a particular feature, but it also has um, a reasonable uh, sense in the general direction that we're trying to go with the majority of the controllers. So if you are waiting for some PR reviews in the controllers area, I, ap I apologize, it might take some time, uh, but always try to ping us on Slack, even if it has to be a couple of times. I, I've been notoriously responding to people a couple of weeks or even months after they ping me. If there are times like KubeCon and my Slack just bubbles up with tons of notification, unfortunately I barely track my GitHub notification at this point in time because it's impossible. Um, 
so I, every time I will review a PR, I will ask the contributor to, to ping me on Slack when it gets uh, addressed, when he addresses my comments and so that we can move certain features uh, faster. With that, uh, oh yeah, I almost forgot. So a couple months back, I think it was uh, February, um, a group of people from our scheduling mostly, but not only, uh, figure out that they would want to formulate a work group within the Kubernetes project that is primarily devoted to improving the overall uh, batch uh, interface. So if you're thinking about, I don't know, um, high, uh, high performance computing, lots of uh, any kind of uh, data manipulation, uh, AI ML, or even CI flows. So stuff like Kubeflow uh, or Spark, if you are running tools like that, and there's quite a few of them that grow around the entire Kubernetes core because over the past couple of years by now, we said that we will provide certain basic features, but we wanna see what the community builds around the core Kubernetes. Um, so Aldo reach out to, uh, to us in the SIG apps, reach out to folks from SIG scheduling and SIG node, and together we're trying to get um, a group of people that are interested in, and we're trying to push uh, certain features uh, forward to improve the overall experience. Um, we are meeting every other Thursday at 4 p.m. Uh, European time. Of course, there's a mailing list and a Slack channel devoted specifically for us. Uh, like you've already saw, and I did mention that a couple of times, all those work around index jobs, uh, the job tracking API, uh, job suspension. These are contributions done primarily by the folks from the from the batch work group. So if that's something that you're interested in, feel free to drop us uh, a note. There was a session yesterday where Aldo was introducing what the workgroup batch is and their use cases. Uh, I was hoping that it'll be the other way around, but unfortunately it happened uh, yesterday. Uh, but I put a link uh, so you can probably, and I've heard that the CNCF is slowly uploading the videos from KubeCon already. So you should be able to check uh, the recording. Uh, within a days, hours probably. I think with that, I'm open to questions, shall we have any, okay? I have two questions. Uh, the first question is, since reviewers need so much background, are there any mentoring opportunities? Right, that's, that's a very question. That's a very good question, thank you. Uh, we've started a mentoring cohort in combination with SIG CLI since I'm leading both of the SIG apps and SIG CLI efforts, uh, where the entry barrier for SIG CLI is significantly lower than for SIG apps, and they are very frequently uh, overlapping. Um, I'm hoping that after KubeCon, I already spoke with Paris, I've seen her earlier today here, uh, we will be slowing, slowly putting something together uh, where we will be having private Slack channels and we will be uh, uh, having a group of people that we will be mentoring towards getting to the reviewer and eventually approvers. And my second question is, what is your biggest need on SIG apps? Contributors, I would say probably like with all the rest of the people that were speaking either earlier today or even earlier this week, pretty much every single open source project is struggling. Uh, we're not any different th with that. Um, even going through the open PRs, even if you don't have the reviewer or approver label, that doesn't mean that you can't review PRs. You can't double check um, the issues that are being reported by different users. Any kind of input like that where, oh, I looked at it and I was able to reproduce. Oftentimes um, users will report a problem uh, which is a very narrow or edge case that is hard to reproduce. And it's hard for us to be able to verify every single edge case because if there's, I don't know, uh, 50 or even more issues open and I have to spend half an hour or an hour per every issue, 
not to mention similar amount of PRs that I need to look where every single PR is roughly the same uh, amount of time, sometimes even longer. It's, it doesn't scale and there's not that many of us. So every kind of input where, oh, I looked at it and even better if you can uh, double check it or ensure that it's still a problem with the latest version. Oftentimes people will report issues that happened in earlier version of Kubernetes and something that might have has uh, been fixed by a different change or is not a problem anymore. Any kind of information and input from all of you where you will just say, oh yeah, I can easily reproduce that on the latest kind cluster, for example, or I did look at it in the latest kind and it, do it doesn't appear to be a problem anymore, or any kind of input like that is more than welcome. Okay, I don't see any other questions. I'll be here around for a little bit and we have a uh, sick meet and greet in slightly less than an hour at one. I don't know where that is yet, but I'll figure it out because I'll check my scat in a bit. Uh, I'll be there for, uh, as well, so if you wanna talk about SIG apps or SIG CLI, um, I'm more than happy to do so. Thank you very much.